Okay, today's lesson is about um, reading nonfiction as well as visual literacy because there's an awful lot of crossover between the two. Um, right now I'm going to teach uh, Jolliffe and Roskelly's Modified Rhetorical Triangle, and this comes from uh, the textbook for AP Language of Composition called The Language of Composition, which is a really great um, resource um, and a very good textbook for those classes. Um, but that being said, then, one of the key features, then, are these terms, speaker and writer, aim or purpose, and um, so we're talking about speaker or writer, and that is uh, who's putting forward the rhetorical piece. Um, then there's their aim or purpose. What are they trying to intend for the audience? Um, what effect do they want to have? Subject is the topic or what it is about. Um, and then the last part is... Uh, the genre, which is the type of thing. For us, we're going to be doing um, retro magazine ads for the entire presentation, just as examples. We also want to figure out who the intended audience is. Um, who the intended audience is affects what kind of content or the subject or what you're going to be talking about. So um, understanding who the intended audience is also tells us then about um, what kind of content that's going to be there. Um, content refers then to the stuff that's in it, the, the elements, and a lot of times to um, the authors of the textbook talk about the three main appeals, which would be like logos, which is logic, um, another one is pathos, which is emotions, and then um, they also go into detail about um, what is called ethical arguments, ethos. Um, uh, but for today, we're focusing mostly on visual literacy and, and um, reading, uh, using this in the context of evaluating nonfiction as well. So as I go forward then, first thing that we're going to analyze is going to be this uh, retro Nabisco ad. Um, and what you see here is obviously the speaker is the Nabisco company and the clue would be the icon shown in the background um, and the name of the company. What you have then the subject is obviously cookies and eating cookies, um, Oreo cookies in particular, and how do we know that? It's got the, the brand label down there and also up here in, in the, the thesis, and I'm going to use a different color because that way you can see it. Um, the intended audience. Um, I would bet, just based upon the images here, that the fact that we're selling a grocery and a magazine, these cookies, and they're also the imagery of the, the little girl right here, I would say that the intended audience is probably um, a female, usually um, a mother. Um, I would bet that this was in a woman's magazine, probably circa 1950s, maybe 40s, maybe as late as the 60s. I'm guessing that just based upon the, the, the grade of the print as well as um, the type of image used. Obviously then, like the appeal to the audience, you got the little girl who loves the, um, the cookies and that always makes us feel good to see little children wanting things. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. We're just kind of like analyzing the content. Notice the color scheme too. The colors uh, that they use in this uh, are primarily red, which is um, red is an aesthetically pleasing color. Um, and obviously one that's used in corporate America a lot, and in particular for the Nabisco company. So now we come to this last point. What was the aim or purpose? And the aim or purpose is to sell cookies. Um, on that note, then we move on to the next one. Uh, we're gonna. This is a different genre. The genre this time is obviously a uh, Milton Bradley game board um, cover, and this is circa 1940s and 50s. Um, made in the USA. Boy, that's how old this thing is. You can tell it's made in the USA. Um, one of the reasons I like to analyze this is you have uh, Milton Bradley as the speaker. Subject is uh, selling the game Battleship, and that's also its in intended to sell the game. But notice the intended audience part. Uh, I think this is one of the particular telling signs, you know, when we look at uh, the content that's here. Notice uh, Daddy right here and Billy are out in the living room having fun playing Battleship. But where's Sister and Mother? Hmm. Doesn't look like they get to have any fun. And um, part of the reason that I think that this is part of the misogyny of the past is, you know, they're in there doing the dishes after dinner and... Uh, Susie is over there uh, drying off the dishes, helping Mommy. 
Um, Battleship, also the content of the game, is obviously dedicated to war. Um, and we come from a time period, you know, the World War II, uh, greatest generation um, time period. And that, that's something that we got to also talk about when we analyze the images that we're looking at is the context that they come from. Um, this is obviously dedicated to, uh, to males. This is a, a game dedicated that males should be the ones playing it. And it's clear by the picture that you have here. Also, social historical time period of, the, of World War uh, II. Uh, women, even just now, just were allowed to fight in combat. And now here it is the 21st century. Um, we'll go to our last example here. Um, speaker. I, I always thought this stuff was crazy. You know, and here's the speaker, obviously, the character inside of this that's the speaker is the doctor, you know. So there's there's there be multiple speakers. But also the speaker obviously then is is the the camel company, the ones that are trying to sell uh, the tobacco to you. The subject is obviously meant to sell you cigarettes and I, I like this little part down here, little sub part of the, the T zone. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is obviously a magazine article uh, or magazine advertisement, and but it's meant to look very informative and, and meant to uh, seem very logical and medical based. And it tells me the intended audience probably is uh, adults um, from 1950s and 40s, perhaps as late as the 60s. Um, and I'm just guessing based upon this. I could probably do my research and find out even more. But I think the content to this is rather interesting. We, we kind of have what is called an ethical appeal. Um, that's implied. Now it's fallacious because you, you know I'm a doctor and I smoke cigarettes. That's the message is being conveyed, which is contradictory to everything we know about science and cigarettes. But the other part too is you look down here. Uh, your T zone will tell you T for taste and T for throat. That's your proving ground for every cigarette. See if camels don't suit your T zone to a T. And it kind of goes along line with the overall theme that here we go. We have a medical doctor. We have a medical zone that can help you evaluate positively or negatively whether the cigarette is good for you. Um, I love the content of the article. You might be, not be able to read, but doctors in every branch of medicine, all of them, this number here, were asked in a nationwide study of cigarette preference and the three leading research organizations that made the survey. And then the, the brand name most was Camel. So cigarette, of the doctors that smoke cigarettes, Camels are number one. And I think it's funny too, because this is long before like the Joe Camel campaign, which was used to um, appeal to young people. Um, but the whole point being the aim or purpose is to sell people cigarettes and also like to imply that somehow smoking cigarettes is, is healthy. Um, We've come a long way in this country with regard to this. We, this is obviously fallacious advertisement, but the whole point being um, we can analyze an awful lot based upon the images that we see um, if we try to figure out who the speaker is and what, what their intention is, um, who their intended audience is. We can see what their purpose is, what their agenda is, and how they do it. And they do it in a lot of different ways, obviously in another ad. Um, but Using these terms uh, are very handy for analyzing visual, but also a uh, combination of visual and text-based information, graphs, um, evaluating speeches and arguments and things like that. Um, this is one of the many ways that you can skin a cat. There's obviously other like theoretical frameworks, but I just wanted to model how you could use this. Um, in our class, we're going to be actually um, analyzing uh, some actual video advertisements using these very same um, uh, terms to do it. So this is essentially like a, a lesson in nonfiction reading but also visual literacy.